Hello cave dwellers and welcome back to the cave for a quick follow up on the recent look at the GBS 8220. As we discovered this is a low cost device, just £15 delivered, around 20 US dollars, which can accept various video inputs including the 15kHz RGB video from an Amiga, and it gives it a regular VGA output compatible with most current monitors. If you'd like to see the device in more detail then check the link in the description for part 1 of this video. Now we found it wasn't perfect, with noise and white dot artifact in present, especially at higher resolutions. So our goal today is to try and address those problems, but considering there are good quality alternatives out there, albeit more expensive, we want to do this by expending the minimum amount of effort as well as money. If we were to spend too much time or money then we might as well buy the proven more expensive models out there. So can we fix it? Well let's take a look. The first thing I'll be doing is adding a 680 ohm resistor to the C-Sync on the Amiga's output. This is to bring the voltage here within the 3.6 volts maximum rated for the GPS board. This step was recommended by Ian Steadman on his blog, which is linked in the description. These are ferrite rings. These are used to suppress high frequency noise in electronic circuits. We can put these on our video cables and the power cable to see if it eliminates any noise and see if it helps. I'll be making a new video cable. Many of you commented on the unshielded nature of the cable in part 1. It was a fair comment and something we'll be addressing by hacking up a shielded VGA cable for the job. I'll also add a casing on the end for protection. And finally self-adhesive copper tape. Can we use this to reduce noise? If we can it would be a good result costing just £2 for the entire roll and you can find this online or if you're in a real hurry your local garden centre will sell it as a slug and snail repellent so it will keep our devices snail free. Right let's crack on because I'm pleased to say it didn't take too long to make progress on this. The best example of the problems I could find in part 1 were those large blocks of colour in the game Eliminator. As we pause the game at the tunnel you can see the noise on the walls. This is what I'd like to uh, eliminate. <laughs> the first thing I did was to make the cable, just as we did in part 1 but using the shielded VGA cable this time. I added the resistor to the C-Sync line and added some heat wrap which I managed to get solder on by lazily heating it with the soldering iron. At the other end of the cable I joined it to the supplied connector, heat wrapped the joints and wrapped some copper tape around in a redneck attempt to shield them. I snapped a ferrite ring on so we had one at both ends of the cable. I also lined the new plastic casing with copper tape and snapped it together. So our new cable should be much better shielded than the old one. Let's jump back into Eliminator then and, well, I can't see any difference personally. Our new cable is on the left here and our previous on the right, and we have just about the same amount of noise on both, so while this isn't a bad cable to have made up and have, it really hasn't fixed our problem. Let's move on now then to a solution suggested by user Benutza on the a1k.org forums. Way back in 2015, this isn't a new device, we're on revision 3 here, and in fact there's a revision 4 board out there. The link is in the description to his original post. So the traces on the back of the board here run from the RAM to the IC performing the conversion, and Benutza suggests sticking copper tape over them to add a layer of shielding. To test this theory I placed some tape on the board and just moved it around while watching the image, being careful not to contact any through hole pins from components. If we zoom in here I hope that you can see the level of noise on the picture is changing. It reduces when I press the copper tape against the traces and returns when I lift the copper. This was very promising. I went ahead and stuck some tape across the traces, again being careful to give clearance around any component pins and just rub the wrinkles out of the tape for a nice flush finish. The result of this step was very pleasing indeed. Here's Eliminator as we run up to the tunnel and we pause it. Now here's a side by side comparison, on the left we have the copper tape fix and on the right the board without any tape, and I think you'll agree it's a vast improvement on the level of noise. I think the pictures speak for themselves really, I, I can't say much more than that, it, everything just looks so much better with that copper tape in place. So feeling enthused by this success I decided that I was now the king of shielding and I'd shield all traces to give me a crystal clear 4K Amiga image. 
This of course was stupid and resulted in a worse picture. Don't do it or you'll be peeling all of the copper tape off again just like I did. Stick to the ram traces only, that's the only part that needs shielding. So after a little more testing I decided that actually this is where I'll end my experiments. Essentially for the cost of the board and a couple of pounds for some copper tape I had achieved what I'd set out to do. But slightly more surprising was even at high resolutions those white sparkling dots we saw in part 1 had actually gone completely. Here it is operating in a high resolution uh, with some large blocks of colour here on deluxe paint and again you can see less noise than we experienced before but also none of those white sparkly dots. Let's keep some perspective on all of this then. It's not absolutely perfect but for the price this was a quick and easy fix with a result that I'm more than happy with. Some of you have also asked why I don't just use an RGB to SCART cable and a SCART to HDMI converter instead of VGA or just put the SCART straight into a television. Well allow me to show you. My Amiga monitor may be dead but my PC monitor isn't. And with the VGA output I can still enjoy those good old scan lines on this CRT. I hope the previous review and the quick and dirty fixes in this episode have proven useful to you especially if you're looking for a cheap solution for occasional casual gaming. You'll see more footage from this device in part 3 of my CD32 series that I'm working on and other future episodes. So until then, thank you for watching and take care. Music